بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد في شأن حبيبه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد uh, By the grace of Allah Almighty we are continuing our درس from the 40 hadith on the noble character of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم as compiled by Imam Yusuf bin Ismail al-Nabahani رحمه الله and it's a huge honor to be delivering this part of the lesson from the blessed masjid of Sayyiduna Ibrahim Khalilullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is known as Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets. Because his two sons, Sayyiduna Ismail alayhi salam and Sayyiduna Ishaq alayhi salam are prophets. His grandson, Sayyiduna Ya'qub alayhi salam is a prophet. His great grandson, Sayyiduna Yusuf alayhi salam is a prophet. And all of the other prophets, except for according to some scholars, Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam, all of the other prophets that came afterwards were from the offspring, from the descendants of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, which is why he is known as Abu al-Anbiya, or the father of the prophets. So it's a huge honor to be in the blessed presence of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, to have the honor of visiting his resting place, and to recite the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam here in this blessed masjid. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam is the greatest prophet after our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The highest ranking prophet after our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam is dear to our hearts because we recite peace and blessings upon him in every single salah that we pray. In every single salah that we pray, we recite Durud Ibrahimi or Salah al Ibrahimiya where we send peace and blessings upon our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family, and also upon Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salam and his family. Now, many scholars have mentioned many reasons for this, many wisdoms behind this. One reason is that when Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salam built the Kaaba, at that time he made dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. One of the duas that Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salam made after building the Kaaba was رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا O oh my Lord, send amongst my offspring the most majestic messenger who will recite to them your verses and will teach them the book and the wisdom and will purify them. So Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, made dua for the final and greatest messenger sallallahu alayhi wa to come from his offspring. And it's from the barakah, from the blessing of the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the land of Mecca from the offspring of Sayyidina Ibrahim Alaihi Salam. And this is something which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alluded to in a hadith. He said, Ana da'watu Abi Ibrahim. I am the fruit of the dua of my father Ibrahim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam referred to himself as being from the, uh, the blessings of the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim Alaihi Salam, who is the forefather of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So because Sayyidina Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam bestowed such a huge favor upon us by making dua for the final messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be from his offspring, we, as a token of our gratitude and our appreciation for this dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam, we recite peace and blessings not only upon our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but also upon Sayyidina Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam in every single prayer that we perform. So back to the, the 40 hadith, we reach hadith number 21. An Anasin radiyallahu anhu, qala kana rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la ya'khudhu bil qarafi 
ولا يقبل قول أحد على أحد. سيدنا أنس رضي الله عنه said, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم would not entertain accusations of one person against another without any proof. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would not accept one person's word over another. And this is a very important lesson from the akhlaq, from the character of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when dealing with matters that arise in our daily lives. Because we are human beings, we are social creatures, we interact with each other, we have families, we have relatives, we have neighbors, and certain times disputes arise. And when disputes arise, it's important for the person in authority, for example, the father when dealing with his children, to make sure that he listens to both sides of the story. At times what happens in our homes, in our communities, in our societies, is that people listen to one side of the story and then make a decision without listening to the other side of the story. This is not from the sunnah of the Prophet The Prophet taught justice. He taught that when somebody comes and tells you something about somebody else, you don't listen to it straight away. You don't pass on everything that you hear about people. You don't spread rumors. But rather, what do you do? You wait and you see what the other side of the story is. You approach the person that's being spoken about and ask them directly, about what's being said about them. The Prophet ﷺ is the epitome of the teachings of the Qur'an. The first hadith that we covered in this collection was where Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha said that the character of the Prophet ﷺ was the Qur'an. And the Qur'an commands us to uphold justice in every single situation, even if we have to uphold justice against our own parents, against our own children, against our own brothers and sisters. The Qur'an teaches us that if a sinful person comes to you with news, you don't just take it, you don't just listen to it, but rather you investigate, you try to find out what the truth is. And the Prophet ﷺ said, it's enough for a person to be classified as a liar, for him to spread everything that he hears, to pass on everything that he hears. And especially in the era of social media, this sin is one that is committed frequently, because people send us messages about somebody, or a video of someone, or a screenshot about somebody, and we're very, very quick to forward that to all our contacts, or to forward that into groups, without actually investigating to see whether it's even true, whether it's even permissible for us to spread this information onto others. So it's very important for us not to just spread everything that we hear. The sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is to uphold justice in every single case. Hadith number 22, عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يأكل متكئا ولا يتأ عقبه رجلان The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم would not lean back whilst eating. The Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is to eat in a position where he's not reclining or leaning on something. Because eating whilst leaning against something or whilst Reclining on something is a sign of arrogance. And our Prophet وسلم, is the furthest away from arrogance that is possible. The Prophet وسلم, despite being the best of all creation, despite the Prophet وسلم, being the leader of all the children of Adam, despite the Prophet وسلم, being the one who would be given the flag of praise on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet وسلم, had no pride. He وسلم, had no arrogance. The Prophet وسلم, taught us to be humble. He sallallahu alayhi wa said, مَنْ طَوَادَ عَلِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ Whoever shows humbleness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty elevates the honor of that person. So our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would not recline whilst eating, and he would not walk in front of people with two people walking behind him. He sallallahu alayhi wa walked alongside the people. He didn't ask for special protocol. He sallallahu alayhi wa wanted to show the people that a true leader is one who remains amongst the people. A true leader is the one who is compassionate with his followers. And he showed this through his example, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith number 23, Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, كان رسول الله sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لا يحدث حديثا إلا تبسما Subhanallah. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa never spoke except that he was smiling. And in one narration in the commentary, 
he mentions that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would speak and he would smile when speaking, a light would emerge from between his blessed teeth. This was the beauty of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The blessed teeth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would sparkle like pearls when he would smile and a beautiful light would emerge from between the teeth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith number 24, عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال كان لا يدفع عنه الناس ولا يضرب عنه Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما the cousin brother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said people would not be driven away from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nor would they be prevented from him and in the commentary it mentions that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala describes the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran as Rasulam Minhum a messenger who is from amongst the people. And this was also part of the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasoolan minhum. O oh Allah, send amongst them a messenger who is from amongst them, who is one of the people. And this again highlights how the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam lived with the people. He sat with the people. He ate with the people. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't have a special spread of luxurious food which was separate for him, whilst other people ate normal food. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ate whatever everybody else was eating. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wore whatever everybody else was wearing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat with the downtrodden, with the poor, with the less well off, with people who were considered as lowly in society. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to make everybody feel at ease. He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wanted to endear all types of people from all types of society to the message of Islam. And this is the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith number 25, here Imam Nabahani Rahimahullah mentions three ahadith on the same topic. An Anasin radiyallahu anhu, qala, kana Rasulullahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam la yus'alu shay'an illa a'atahu aw sakat. Rawahu al-Hakim. Sayyidina Anas radiyallahu anhu said, if someone asked for something from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would give it to them or he would remain silent. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would remain silent and wait until gifts were given to him so he could gift whatever was given to him to whoever had asked him for something. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never turn away anybody empty-handed. Al-Imam Ahmad Rida Khan rahimahullah ta'ala he says in a beautiful couplet of poetry, Vaha kya judo karam hai, shahe batha tera, nahi sunta hi nahi mangane wala tera. He says, how incredible and how amazing are your oceans of generosity, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the person who asks from you never even hears the word no from your blessed lips. And this is not just the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the great grandson of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Zainul Abideen, radiyallahu anhu, the son of Imam Hussein, they say about him, مَا قَالَ لَا إِلَّا فِي تَشَهُدِهِ وَلَوْ لَا تَشَهُدْ لَكَانَتْ لَا أَهُ نَعَمُ Sayyidina Zainul Abideen, radiyallahu anhu, was so generous that he never ever said no to anybody who asked him for something. And in fact, if it was not for the, if it was not for the tashahud, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ I bear witness that there is no God except Allah. If the word no was not in the, te- in the declaration of faith, Imam Zain al-Abideen anhu would never even have said the word no on his blessed lips. So if this is the status of the generosity of the great grandson, can you imagine the generosity of the great grandfather sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Rawa al-Imam Ahmad an Abi Usaid al-Sa'idi radiyallahu anhu qal, kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yamna'u shay'an yus'alu. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never prevent a person from something that he was asked for. And Sayyidina Talha radiallahu anhu says, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ لَا يَكَادُ يُسْأَلُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا فَعَلَى The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was hardly asked for something except that he sallallahu alayhi wa gave it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the keys to the treasures of the world and our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa distributed those treasures to whoever he will. As Imam Ahmad Rida Khan 
Rahimahullah Ta'ala also says in a beautiful line of poetry, he says, Mere kareem se ghar qatra kisi ne manga, darya baha diye hain, durbe baha diye hain. If anybody asks for even a droplet from my generous master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give them entire rivers and diamonds and rubies in return. If somebody asks for just a droplet of mercy from our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not just give a droplet, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives entire rivers and oceans of mercy for anybody who asks him for something. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower blessings upon us and accept this gathering in his blessed court. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower blessings and mercies upon our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower blessings and mercies upon Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessings of this noble place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and his maqam. May Allah Almighty relieve us of all of our difficulties. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam remove all calamities from our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam accept all of our lawful du'as. May Allah Almighty for the sake of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam accept all the du'as that we have made in this entire journey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the honor and privilege of traveling to these blessed lands time and time again. May Allah Almighty, with the blessings of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, allow us to do ziyara of the Kaaba that Ibrahim alayhi salam built. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the honor and privilege of traveling time and time again to the blessed lands of Al-Madina al Manawwara. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us death of shahada in the blessed land of Medina, whilst witnessing the beauty of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And may our final words be La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi rahmatika ya rahmatika.